Hello everybody and welcome to another Arkham Horror video. Today, Eric wanted to make this video and I'm not one to say no, uh, especially when it comes to talking about Arkham. Uh, good luck, this video will probably be hours long because I gave <laughs> Justin no heads up. I was just like, hey, let's talk about basic weaknesses. Yeah, so I have a slideshow of every basic weakness here. We're gonna go through them and chat about them one by one. Um, so yeah, buckle up. This might be a long one, so I'm, get some popcorn. Yeah. I'm really excited to see um, where your most watched yeah. <laughs> uh, thing is and where the drop-off is yeah. on this video. I'm hoping right at this point yeah. when I'm like, we have no plan. Well, in that case, thanks for watching, everybody. Like, 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 like and subscribe. Um, All right, so can I, before we get into this, uh, I wanted to know, because you said it to me briefly, but what were you hoping for this video? What were you, were you hoping to learn, hoping to discuss? Let, t t t share with me. Um, I'm hoping to learn, I'm hoping to discuss, and I'm hoping to commiserate. Mm -hmm. um, so like a big part of this is I find that basic weakness system of this game uh, to be incredibly RNG dependent. Mm -hmm. There are some decks where if you get a certain basic weakness, it's like, it's worse than your than your unique weakness. Mm -hmm. It's worse than any weakness you could have ever possibly gotten. There have been times where I've been playing the game and I've gotten a basic weakness and I've laughed because mm -hmm. uh, it had no influence on the game state. And then I've had other scenarios where I got that basic weakness and I was like, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just dead. Like... There is no answer to it. I um, am, uh, as, as everyone knows, I'm a habitual enjoyer of the tower. Mm -hmm. uh, I've really gotten used to the tower in my deck. I can't imagine now ever not, running. Not having it, yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, no, you got to build around the tower. Just mm -hmm. don't expect, there's a four cost, there's a four cost. Card you're going to need to play at some To point. running skills. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I also think it's really interesting because in, no matter what campaign you play in, no matter what scenario you play in, uh, there is always a chance that these cards are going to be in your deck. These are the only cards that can mm -hmm. universally end up in anyone's deck of any kind of deck uh, in any scenario. Mm -hmm. One day when I'm a Yithian, wandering around, committing skill cards, I will have the tower. Yeah, still show up. Still show up. So yeah, this is, uh, I, I think that you're 100% right that weaknesses are very RNG, the basic weaknesses. Um, and I think that's just because like the general design space that they explored and then they've also tried to fix in certain ways, I don't think were actually like solutions. I think that the majority of the basic weaknesses are actually on the easy side. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are some that I would say are, are, are hit hard. Um, but most of them are actually pretty soft, but as you said, context dependent, they can really change the scope of things. Um, our first one. We got here, we might as well dive in and start going uh, on. One other thing I just wanted to bring up was just, I also want to talk a little bit as a new player about A, why I shouldn't be afraid of these, or B, what I should do to get around mm. them as fast yeah, yeah, as yeah, possible. Yeah. Um, also, there's been a lot of people, they play. I'm up, So, in actual official rules, you roll your random basic weakness after your deck building. I think your random basic weakness should be rolled first. I, I, I do believe that. Not because I think it makes the game easier, to do that, I think because it actually makes deck building more interesting if you know your weakness before you get started. You might play cards that you otherwise wouldn't. However, a lot of people actually do a system where they roll three, mm -hmm. get rid of one, and then take one of the two at rem remaining at random. I don't like that um, very much. It, it, it What it does, though, is... Like, that's the thing, right? Like, a lot of people, they if you used it to get rid of the one that done did nothing, it would be more interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Some people also do it where... You roll three, someone else takes one out, and then you get one of the two. So, like, it's it's one of those things where, like, I, I think that you should take the weakness that is worse for you. That's just kind of, like, what I think would be more interesting. And that's why I also think, again, you should roll your random basic weaknesses first. I rolled lactose intolerance. Mm -hmm. I rolled IBS. <laughs> <laughs> we think we're so funny. Yeah. Uh, all right, should we dive in? And yeah, we can, we can further expand on all these points as we go as well. So mm -hmm. Amnesia, choose this card all but one card from your hand. Uh, with each one of these, I would love to also ask, does this card scare you? No. No? This is actually probably one of the most generally scary basic weaknesses that you have. This is one of the only weaknesses that when I see them, I go, oh, fuck. <laughs> this is going to, like, change my entire life. Yeah. Because um, if you think about it... Um, on the simplest scope, what wins card games? Having cards in your hand. Yeah, just cards, yeah, right? Like a resources. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, and cards are actually, I think, losing all the cards in your hand is probably the hardest to come back from, right? That, Compared to yeah. like losing all your resources. That's fair. Uh, it's not gonna affect everyone. There might be times where you're a low to the ground deck and this discards one card, right? Mm -hmm. And like, that's okay. 
I also just I also just think of how has how as a new player I'm often trying to put everything on the board state as yeah. quickly as possible. Yeah. And it's like I as I'm thinking about my uh, Will York deck for Circle yes. Undone. Yes. I'm realizing yeah I'm finally playing a deck that holds cards back. Yeah. Every other deck that I've been playing, ha the struggle has been I need more money to play these cards, mm -hmm. not. I am holding them back to be a smart yeah. player. And so I could see this for any deck that is not a new player deck, which is just... <laughs> and notably, like, actually, like, York's a great example, because York can actually gain amnesia, right? He can discard assets and then play them from them out of his second hand, yeah. right? Um, but, like, this usually will discard four to six cards. <sighs> and, like, in like, in like if uh, you're a big hand deck, this will cripple you, right? Yeah. Um, but it's just one of the things that, like... It's not like 100% bad, but it's generally one of the worst ones because everyone wants cards mm -hmm. for the most part. There's like repeated attempts at making a survivor deck that cares about not having cards in hand, but like Hellbent in Magic or Heckbent, it's like hard to do that and win, right? Because yeah. cards are good, right? Cards are skill tests, like skill cards, right? Like you'll hold your skill cards perfect time and now suddenly you've lost two deductions or like one deduction, right? Yeah. Uh, next, oh, uh, my, my question for that is how do you play around it? Because one thing oh, I've, yeah, noticed, sure. I've noticed you do is when you're nervous about your weaknesses, you do a lot of deck counting. Yeah. Where you'll like try to suss out if you haven't seen the weakness yet. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost like you put yourself on a clock. Is that what you would suggest for somebody with an amnesia in the deck if they're building a big Yeah, and deck? if you haven't seen the stuff, you um, have to um, be aware that it's coming. And like that's like counting your deck is good because you can know like what the odds of hitting it are. Like yeah. if I'm going to draw three cards and I have five cards in my deck, I'm probably not going to play that card right now. I'm probably going to save that when I draw the amnesia. Um, if you haven't seen your weakness yet, like if your weakness is amnesia, play cards from your hand so it hurts less. Use the cards before you lose them, yeah. right? Uh, and then sometimes you just have to accept that you're going to lose cards, right? Like that's kind of just like you might not have the perfect window to play them and you kind of just have to like write it out and be like bye you know bye yeah um but like it's easy to like know when it happens you still got to keep one card right mm -hmm. so just keep like the best card or the card that lets you come back the quickest right like that's what it kind of all boils down to i could see that yeah all right the next one's very similar paranoia discard all of your resources this one yeah is softer than the other one it can be really bad at the wrong time um you still got to keep one resource because it's you draw and then gain a resource during upkeep. Right. So you still got to keep one of your resources. Um, this card really hurts big money decks, um, but Bryn gave me tech for that. There's a card called Investments where you can put money onto it to bank and then grab it back later. So like you basically are saving up for that time when you lose this and you get an extra like eight to ten resources on top of it. Um, but generally, this one is... It's interesting, right? Because with um, Amnesia, you have to play cards from your hand, which is also going to spend your resources. But you're going to spend your resources before you spend all the cards in your hand just because the, they're not like... Even though you can gain a resource and draw a card, they're not one for one, no. right? Um, so like that three cost card has now just made your weakness do nothing. However, one thing to keep in mind though with every one of these basic weaknesses is they also eat up one of your card draws, right? Yes. Like, which is you're basically getting one less card for the turn. So it's just something like, that's kind of like with Amnesia, you also are losing an additional card because of that, because it also ate that up. But yeah, this one is pretty soft. It can be bad. Uh, and like Amnesia, you kind of just want to spend your resources when they come. All right, Haunted. Add Haunted to your threat area, you get minus one to each of your skills. Double action, discard Haunted. That that feels like a bad card. Um, um, it's probably mostly because I've been playing in two-player games. Yeah. Uh, where this feels extra hard because it's because it, either player losing two actions is hard. But like this yeah. feels like this feels like you drew a treachery out of your deck <laughs> on top of um, on top of drawing from the treachery deck. Um, minus one to each of your skills feels especially bad um, to me. Like that feels like a big hit. I am glad that you're able to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So that softens the blow a little bit, but it feels to me like you've lost a card draw and now you've lost a turn almost worth of actions. Yeah, so the double action does hurt. Um, the Funnily enough, I'm actually pretty okay to see Haunted mm. just because of my play style where I make my one stat big. Yeah. So like the minus one, I'm like, oh, it just basically cancels out this bonus, but I'm still really high. And then like, because anyone can get rid of it, when there's downtime, someone gets rid of it. That's fair. Um, however, with certain decks, 
it's bad. Like, it can be really bad. Like, if you're playing, like, a survivor, it hurts a little bit harder because their numbers are low unless you're playing a fail survivor, in which case you're just like, hmm, thank you, you know? Um, but generally, yeah, in two-player, it, like, uh, the double actions hurt a bit harder, and this one, I think, is notable. However, most of the double actions are pretty easy to clear out because you can get rid of them. Yeah. Right? You can just, like, when the time is right, you can just say, I'm done with you. Yeah. Um, but the minus one is annoying, but, like, if you're playing, like, stat ball where you have one stat that you just take to the moon, it is pretty easy to just ignore. I've actually played with, like, this one. I've drawn it and be like, you're staying here forever, and I still have eight brain. You know, like, I'm still doing okay. I don't know how you do that, because in my mind, I'm like, I need at least two good stats in yeah. the game. I don't, I can't. I got a mind, and I got a something else. No, no you just gotta, uh, embrace it. You'll get there. You'll get there. It's, it's just like one of those things where, you, uh... You have no fear. I was I was deck building recently, and someone was like, do you want to play this card to help you in the Mythos phase? And I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, that's right. Because you just, like, don't care about the Mythos deck. <laughs> it's, that's true. That's, I mean, like, I know them so much that I kind of know what to expect. And, like, the reality is is that you do get beat down, but you're not going to get beat down 100% of the time, right? Like, my goal is to get is to have the game only beat me down a third of the time, and then I win the other the two-thirds, and I'll come out on top. Right. Yeah, that's fair. That's just kind of how I do it. All right, Psychosis. Uh, so it's another, uh, this is your threat area. I have to take one or more horror, take one direct damage, double action, discard. This is also going to pair with Hypochondria, which you have to take one or more damage, take a direct horror. I don't like either of these. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say I feel that they are slower mm -hmm. than Haunted is. So I feel like, I mean, they can come at a really terrible time and just kill you. Yeah. But because it is only after another thing triggers, mm -hmm. you can play around it. So I, I feel like I've seen us do this a bunch with treachery cards in Circle Undone, where it's like Circle Undone's like, something bad's going to happen. And Justin's like, let's just not let the bad thing happen. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I feel that that's my feeling on these two. Th that's what I was going to say pretty much is just like, just don't take damage anymore, right? Like, just like try not to take damage. Yeah. And then when you, I, I think like with, uh, Actually, all of these, right? Um, they're scary, um, but just don't do it. And then when there's downtime, get rid of it. Just make it a priority. Yeah. Right? Like that's the thing, right? Like if you are the, if you like, you're like this is great, especially in two player two, because like if there's no enemy, um, the goon can be like, oh, here I'll clear that out for you, right? Yeah. If there is, uh, if there is an enemy. And the goon is like, it's retaliated, deals damage. As the seeker, you just might be like, hey, I'm going to get rid of this for you right now just to solve that. Yeah. The two action tax does suck, right? It's, uh, it's eating two of your precious actions on your turn. Um, but I think a lot of times, sometimes you can look at this and just be like, uh, like this one especially, right? So like this one where you take one or more horror, you're like, uh, I have like eight damage that I can take and six horror. I can probably ride this out for a little bit. Yeah. And sometimes... You, I even look at one of these cards and I'm like, once again, like you're just going to be here for the rest of the scenario. And yes, sometimes that bites my ass, but that's the whole point of taking risks, right? Like sometimes the risks catch up on you, right? Yeah. But less than you think. Justin, increasingly think. after that that skids deck, uh, are you in for gambling over yeah. here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, these ones I, I, I do think are on the slightly scarier side. They're very easy to get rid of. Um, but like a bad mythos card, especially cause you draw these usually during upkeep, a bad mythos card can throw you for a loop. Yeah. Um, it's also these things where they change the, I know there's people who don't follow this rule, which I do follow this rule because I, I think selecting your rules is not like the best way to engage with a game IMO, but that's a whole other can of worms. Uh, they change the, for each, every rule. So like, for example, it was like, for each uh, point you fail by on a skill test, you take a damage or discard a card from your hand. Because you need to choose for each one of those, it's three separate instances of damage. So this would then also deal you three separate instances of the direct, which I think is great. Because as I said earlier, I do think that weaknesses should be scarier and that's what makes these more of a priority. It makes them more engaging for me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mob Enforcer, 433, bearer only for prey, which means it'll never engage anybody else. Uh, well, choose to. You can still engage it. It has Hunter, deals a damage, spend four resources to parlay and discard Mob Enforcer. I love this card. I love this card because um, I, I I think that it is a weakness. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I think that it is probably one of the softer weaknesses you can have. Um, I love the idea that anyone who's not um, uh, the muscle in your in your party uh, is going to have to pay those four resources. So effectively, it's just a four resource tax to get mm -hmm. through it. Um, but I love I love any any person who's looking to get kills. Yeah, getting or, to getting to get benefits out yeah, of your weakness. Card. Yeah, and like even if it's one of those things where like um like say you were the goon. And I, this was mine. I drew it, and you didn't draw an enemy. You'd be like, "Hey, I'm gonna kill that guy." And I'm like, "Righty roo!" But if you drew a big enemy, I could be like, "I'll just pay this guy off." Yeah, exactly. He's flavorful, and yeah, he is on the easier side for sure. Yeah. But uh, him showing up, his, his stat line is actually pretty ridic for a basic weakness. Four three three is actually relatively high. I feel like they're pushing you to use the four resources. Yes, as they should. As they should. Yeah. I wouldn't mind if this guy was like five three three. I think that could be really fun. Now that would make that would make parlaying with him good even for the for the fighters. Yep. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh Silver Twilight Acolyte two three three, bearer only and hunter, and after he attacks, place one doom on the current agenda. I love this card way more. I'm way more afraid of this card. I think that this one is actually pretty scary. Um, because if it goes wrong, <laughs> it goes wrong. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like... And the fact that it's whenever it attacks. Yeah. So, like, you... If you're playing around with your card draw, or you're doing weird things, and you get this, and then the thing immediately attacks in the... Yeah, enemy phase? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're yeah. just like, oh, so I like, lost as a turn. This is actually something that I think, uh, going back to your question, how do you play around these? Uh, if it's your third action, don't draw cards. Yeah. Never draw cards in your third action, right? Or, like, if you are, make sure there's a fighter going after you, if you know this is in your deck. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, this guy attacking is no good. I think, once again, if I could make these changes today with the full card pool, I do wish that weakness is actually, like, if this was digital, they could change. This guy should have five. This guy should have retaliate, I think. Yeah. I think that would be... You know what? Give the motherfucker alert, too. I don't care. Like, make this guy, like, actually, like... I think he's very scary, but I would love it if he was scarier. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I will say I will say I think his his stat line is well balanced yes. uh, to make you panic uh, if you're a seeker and try and just like yeah flobble down at him. Yeah. But it, what it basically does is one way or another it wastes a turn. If you're the mm -hmm. seeker and you're off somewhere else, you need you need your muscle to come in yeah. immediately and kill this this dude because mm -hmm. he like he's a problem. Yeah. Another thing to note that actually might not be immediately apparent on first glance. But these guys are essentially double actions that require a test, right? Because they do have three, which means they generally need two attacks to get rid of. Yeah, that's a very or good Or like point. a vicious blow. Uh, however, unlike the double actions, these actually fail. So I think that while some of these uh, basic weakness enemies are pretty minor, um, they are notably strong at what they like at like they're like they're like a bigger threat than the other ones because they require the same amount of actions but you can fail those tests yeah. which is a little bit more interesting all right stubborn detective three two two bear only hunter while he's at your location treat your investigator as if their printed text box were blank except for traits i hate this guy <laughs> he's not that difficult to get rid of no. The three sucks for a lot of for a lot yeah. of classes that have low fist. But once again, you're just gonna ask your muscle to come over and beat him up. Yeah. But to to treat your printed text block boxes blank yeah. hurts yeah, yeah. so much. So notable stories. Um Kelvin Wright. Yeah. You now just have zeros for all your stats. <laughs> you actually can't like you don't get your bonus. Um Charlie Kane. His text box gives you additional uh, ally slots. You draw this guy, those allies are now gone. They're dead. You don't have slots for them anymore. Um, but there's some positives, too. I forget there's um, there's some that, like, um, they actually, like, do better without their text box in certain ways. I don't know off the top of my head, but I think it's, like, one of the things that is really cool about Stummer Detective. Luke Robinson, you just, you're stuck in the dream box. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how that works. But, um, it's... I think this is a really good design. It does have that problem where, like, some people it hurts more than others, yeah. right? Like, um, I'm trying to think of one. Like, Safino Rousseau, hers is all done during upkeep. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lola Hayes. So Lola Hayes has the restriction where she can only play cards in her class, uh, or her role for that. If you have Stubborn Detective, you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. So you just buy some handcuffs, get Stubborn Detective, lock them up, and take them with you, and make everyone else's lives miserable. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, if like Hank Samson, the guy who turns into a super form, if you die when he's in play, uh, it's gone. Notably, uh, this doesn't just affect you. Yeah. So like if you're in my location with Stubborn Detective and it's my weakness and he's engaged with me, you're still blank, which is like... I hate this guy. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying he's the worst or anything. I'm just saying he stinks. I think he's up there in terms of like the one that you don't expect to be bad until suddenly you're like, whoa, you know? Um, but he is easy to kill. His flavor is really good. He follows you literally everywhere. Like yeah. you go to Lost in Time and Space. He's there. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to get you Stella Clark, you know? Um, but like the text box being blank can just be such a whammy that you don't expect. And it's just like, good night. You're, 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 you're fucked. Phenomenal art on him too. Yeah. Everybody else panicking as he's just yeah. just losing it yeah all right indebted it's permanent so it's always in play you begin the game with two fewer resources ouch that's all i can say ouch so actually i think that this is the weakness that if i could take every time i would really and what was it was it the was it the scenario where we had less money that destroyed us? No, we had three cards in hand. Three cards in hand was the one that yes. destroyed us. Okay, yeah. that's what I was thinking yeah. of when I thought of this. Yeah, no, 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 that, no, that, because that was, um, yeah, the finale of Forgotten Age that yeah. happened in, which is out on YouTube now, so it's no spoilers, it's on YouTube. I mean, it is spoilers if you haven't watched it, but yes, we did get bodied in the last scenario because we had, like, three cards in our own. Because I hand. can't win one of these campaigns. <laughs> spoilers for every campaign I'm in, we don't win. No, we won, we won Dunwich. We won Dunwich. You died, but we did win. Okay, I don't win. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the reason why this one's really good mm -hmm. is that, like, you never have to draw it. Oh, good point. So, like, with every other weakness, especially, like, if you cycle your deck, imagine drawing them, like, multiple times, This right? is the tower, but it only costs two resources. Yeah, exactly, and, and no action, right? That's amazing. Yeah. This is actually the best, this is the best weakness ever. Let's all, let's all be in debt. Yeah. Like if I could take it every time, I would. I think it's flavorfully really cool. Yeah. I do think that if this was designed today, I would have it be you start with like zero resources or like one resource, right? Yeah. Um, just to like actually make it like a notable type of thing. But anytime I roll this, I'm like, let's go you know yeah yeah especially like if you're a big if you're like a there's a an investigator amanda sharp who's very powerful or even harvey walters you know him mm -hmm. he draws a lot of cards you cycle through your deck multiple times if your weakness is bad you're going to see it multiple times um and this just removes that completely yeah. you're just fine yeah you're great yeah i do love you getting there and being like oh it's just the tower like you're your best friend you know you're like oh yeah, yeah you're like my best friend but yeah, worse. Yeah. yeah you're like my favorite card that i put yeah. in all my decks because the tower also eats your mulligan right like it has to stay it yeah it yeah. has to stay it's four resources it locks you out of choices yeah it's you can't wait till I, wait till I show you the devil i'm so ready for the devil all right internal injury put internal injury into play in your threat area at the end of your turn take one direct damage double action discard it there's also chronophobia same thing but horror I mean, these do suck. Yes. Like, especially if we compare to psychosis and hypochondria. Yeah. These are just, like, worse versions of that. They just hit you harder. Yeah. I, I, I these ones are worse to me because, uh, a, as you were bringing up and as you helped me realize with, uh, with those other two, uh, they are slow. They are slow. You can choose when to, when to acknowledge them, when yep. to deal with them. With this one, you you should probably do it this turn. Yes. Um, these ones I think are a priority elimination. Yeah. These ones are like solve this problem immediately. Um, cause I've seen it happen to Bryn where he's just bleeding out and like three turns later and he's like, this is bad. <laughs> like you could probably survive one turn. Yeah. However, if the moment is good, like the only reason you shouldn't is because you're either winning the game or there's bigger problems you need to solve immediately. They're going to deal more lasting impact to you because if you take a turn off, uh, it's going to get you. Yeah. And it's going to keep adding up, right? Yeah. Because suddenly next turn could be worse than this turn, yeah. right? Yes. Like if Yig is here, you probably shouldn't worry about bleeding out. Yeah. But if it's just like one of Yig's babies, have someone evade it and solve this problem or have them solve it for you. Just yeah. make it a priority. Exactly. Because they'll do something. Like they, they'll, they'll do something. Yeah. Yeah. They're already doing something to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, overzealous. Draw the top card of the encounter deck. That card gains Surge. I 
don't know how to feel about this card. Mm -hmm. This feels like it's either going to be one of the strongest cards that kills you, or it's going to be an absolute nothing. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on how well you're doing in the rest of the game. In some of our games where we were getting bodied and we thought maybe we'd get back on top, this card would just be a, okay, you're done. Yeah. Go to sleep. Yeah. Um, for uh, a lot of other circumstances, it would just be like... This sucks, but it's not killer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, sorry, I'm just having to... There's some cards that have multiple, and I'm just grabbing those out. Because I don't think they're in the, in the slide. Um, so, yeah, I think that this is a very, very fun basic weakness. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I think, actually difficult. Yeah. Right? Um, if you're a mystic and you have, like, high defensive stats, or, like, you're a rogue and it's, like, a lot of foot tests... You're probably okay with it. Um, but the problem is, is you're essentially drawing three Mythos cards. Oh, I didn't right? think about that. Because and... you're drawing two at the upkeep, one at the start of the next round. And it gives a creature surge, potentially. Yes, it does give, give a creature about. surge. It is nice when you hit a card that already has surge, because you're like, you know. But I think this card's really Two fun. surges counter out, can, can, cancel out, right? I wish. I yeah. wish. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I think this card actually is... This is the one that, like... Um, this is what Bryn says... Uh, this is Bryn's rule for um, basic weaknesses. If he rolls a basic weakness that cripples his deck, he'll take over Zealous instead. Right? Like, if he rolls a weakness that is like, you can't play your deck anymore because, once again, you rolled at the end, mm -hmm. he's like, okay, I'll just take over Zealous instead. Because it's not easy. Um, it's not hard. I think it's like, I know, okay, it is hard. But it's not like, it won't break your deck. It just no. basically lets the game have an extra turn. Mm -hmm. Right? Extra two turns. Against you only, not everybody. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's what I always look at. It. I think it's, like, a very well-balanced um, uh, basic weakness because mm -hmm. it's always scary. Um, and I think the Bryn way of having to be, like, this is um, my fallback if I don't like the weakness I roll makes it very fair, I think, too. That's fair. I don't think... I don't think... I have a healthy enough fear yet of uh, Surge mm -hmm. to understand why this is scary. Well, think about it, right? Like, think of a scary encounter card. Yeah. Now think of drawing another scary encounter card. Like, like cards with Surge generally aren't scary because the effect is minor. Or yeah. it's like, instead of doing this, do that. But let's just say you drew, like, a Rotting Remains and you dealt you three horror, you still have another card coming. That's right? true. Like, that's that's kind of like... I think I'm, the, I think I'm the... My problem, I think, right now is I'm the flavor text on this card. Yeah. Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, that's yeah. the problem I'm having mentally. I'm just like, it'll be bad, but will it kill me? And I'm not thinking back to every single Ooh. game we've played where in the scenario I got a rotting remains or I got that like you're gonna take four horror and yeah. you've only got three horror left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. like that's like that's where it comes in too. However, there's like some campaigns where like the mythos deck is softer and you're just like this actually doesn't even do anything. Soft. Yeah. All right, drawing the sign. So put it into your threat area. Your maximum hand size is reduced by five while checking your hand size during the upkeep phase. Double action, get rid of. So your hand size is now three. This feels scary. Yeah. No, no, it's just it's just one of those ones where you have to do the double action to get rid of it. Yeah, it's it's I think so. Like this one's very similar to Amnesia, mm -hmm. right? Where you um, lose a bunch of cards in your hand. Uh, it, it sucks when you draw this and you have eight cards because you're discarding five, yeah. right? Or you're discarding three if you're like if you're uh, like six or uh, four if you're at seven. Mm -hmm. So like, it's gonna get you. Um, sometimes though, you can kind of just adapt to it, yeah. right? You can kind of just be like, oh, this doesn't actually get me. If you do care about your hand size, you're gonna want to solve it right away. Um, but I think this one's on like the lower tier. But I don't think it's like I don't think it's a walk in the park for every deck like the way Indebted it is. No, yeah. Indebted it I'll always take. Yeah. This is one that like will creep up on you and you'll be like suddenly like, oh fuck. <laughs> I think what I hate about it is that it does what amnesia does, but then it's also two to discard it. Yes, yeah. That's what I don't like it, it leaves you three cards. Yeah, there's a, I think it's a it's a nice balance compared yeah. to comparatively, right? Because it's like it's amnesia's one and done, but this it only leaves you with one card. This leaves you with two more cards, so you have to spend some actions on it. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Uh the thing that follows a okay, three, well, two, I love three. This. Loca spawns at the location farthest from you. Prey bearer only, hunter, when it would be defeated, instead shuffle it into its bearer's deck. I love this card. 
This I, is what happens to Stubborn Detective when he dies. He comes back as yeah, this. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, it this is, is cool. just really cool flavor. Um, I don't think it's that bad. You have so much time to deal with it, and its stat line is so much weaker than some of the ones that land on you right away. Notably, it's also not aloof. Yeah. Um. So, like the hunter, the the goon can still just kill it if it's at the same location. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's. Yeah, th this one is pretty soft. Yeah. The worst part about it is that it can potentially eat a multiple draws. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But like as Will York, I want this. Yeah. yeah. I want to. I want to experience this thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. No. Definitely. Uh, compared to, like, the three that we've seen earlier, I would say this is, like... So it's, like, probably um, Acolyte for hardest a enemies in a vacuum, mm -hmm. then Detective, mm -hmm. then Enforcer, then this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Because this thing might not, like... You might draw this thing with only three turns left. And it might never get to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, there's actually, like, you can also just, like, uh, Scooby-Doo it, right? Like, Benny Hill music and just, like, keep walking yeah, just, away just from leave. it. Yeah, just yeah. leave. Yeah. Just leave. Yeah. All right, Dark Pact. So this is the first of the two cards. So, Dark Pact, two-cost event. So it's mm -hmm. an event that you need to play from your hand. Ooh. Campaign mode only. So you can't play this in standalone, which Eric and I have never done. Deal two damage to an investigator at your location. When the game ends or you are eliminated, if Dark Pact is still in your hand, remove Dark Pact from your deck, search the collection for the price of failure, and add it to your deck. So the price of failure is a revelation. Take two damage, take two horror, place one doom on the current agenda, Remove the price of failure from your deck, search the collection for Dark Pact, and place it in your discard pile. So notably, this can also cause the agenda to advance. This is so flavorful. It is really cool, isn't it? I love this. I 100% don't think it's that bad. I agree. It's bad if you ever get into this one. Mm -hmm. So just, like, don't. Just stab your friend, stab yourself, stab a goat, stab devil. Yeah, yeah, I was, gonna, <laughs> I was about to say, like, stab your ally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, medical student. It's yeah. So this one's like going back to your question of how do I play around this? Just have something that you can stab. Yeah. Just yeah. take that damage. Yeah. I would. I would argue. I would argue there's very few times where I wouldn't potentially just, especially if we're at the end of the investigation and there's a good chance that the other player's winning. I might even stab myself out of the game. Like yeah. that. That second effect, the extra doom, the extra damage, the extra horror. That's that's so big. And then you immediately go back to Dark Pact. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's flavorfully really cool. I, I, I actually don't mind drawing it, though, because I actually think it is engaging to play with. Yeah. Like, I think it is a, is a good time to play with the card. Um, but I do agree it is softer. Yeah. All right. Doomed. Doomed. Revelation. Take one horror. In your campaign log, under your investigators earned story assets and weaknesses, record that Doom approaches. Oh, wow. This. If this was already recorded, remove Doom from your deck and search the collection for a Cursed Face and place it on the bottom of your deck. A Cursed Face. Take two horror. In your campaign log, under your investigator earned story assets and weaknesses, record the hour is nigh. If this is already recorded, remove a Cursed from your deck and search the collection for the bell tolls and place it on the bottom of your deck. You are killed. And your investigator is... eliminated. I love this. Uh, this is bad. Um, this is bad. <laughs> like, especially if you're a deck that shuffles your deck or cycles your deck, you could just die. Yeah, you could just die. This is bad. Yeah. I love this. I want this to be my weakness every game. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, so this one is generally agreed to be the hardest, harshest basic weakness. Um, especially if you can cycle. I actually have a great story where I was playing a four a four part custom campaign, only four scenarios. But because my investigator's elder sign ability shuffled my deck, I went into the final scenario with that in my deck. So how do you play around this card apart from like overzealous in it like Bryn does? Um, our first one of our earlier runs, I had this in a Finn Edwards deck. Um, and Travis was a mystic and he kitted out his deck to always be looking at the top card of my deck or the bottom card of my deck to try to get rid of it or put cards that weren't it on top of my deck. So I wouldn't be drawing it. So there, cause I went into the final scenario with the bell tolls. Um, my only beef with this card is that the card is placed on the bottom of your deck. I yeah. think it should go into your discard pile. Yeah. 
Uh, just because I do think that, like, going into the final scenario with the bell tolls in your deck is an exhilarating experience that everyone should can actually experience more often. Um, there is a fixed version, which we will get to, which I think is actually a kind of like a, a, a more enjoyable version of Doom because Doom doesn't really have, like, a good counterplay unless, like, you have deck manipulation. Um, but it is flavorfully really cool. And it is a tough-ass card. And you also, I love the drawing as you're drawing your, uh, the grave for the final picture. Yeah. In the drawing. I love it. I love that. Yeah. Uh, there's That's a, all of us. We all have that weakness. We do. This is just life. Yeah, this is just human. Um, there's, uh, everyone always says, try this in a Patrice deck. Where Patrice's whole thing is she discards her hand and draws five cards each turn. <laughs> that sounds like a fun time. <laughs> Who's the person who? Who's the person who just puts a weakness? Uh, what's the card that just puts a weakness under your asset, your ally? Oh, um, Ikiak. Yeah, just put, Ichiak. just put, just put that under. I got some bad news for you. She well, only does basic weaknesses, and these don't turn. These are no longer ba basic. It only works for the first one, which you could do. You could, could do. do. You, you could, could do. do. Ikiak, stop that bell. Yeah. All right. The 13th Vision. Put 13th Vision to play in your threat area. Investigation location. Fail ties during skill tests. Double action. Discard the 13th Vision. Number 13 has never hurt me. Never. Uh, this is... This is a hurtful card. So this card is actually very similar to Haunted. Because yeah. you're essentially getting minus one to each of your skills. Mm -hmm. uh, but oh, it, affects every, it affects everybody. Ooh, I don't like that. Yeah. This is actually, I think, like a worse version of Haunted. You can still play around it. Like, I've actually just sat with this for a bit. But if the group is together, cut it. Someone cut it. has to get rid of it ASAP. Yeah. 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 I don't like that. It also messes up. The reason I, the real reason I don't like it is because it messes up my mental calculations <laughs> of the Chaos Bag. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I like the design on this one. Like I said, I think a lot of weaknesses in this game, unfortunately, aren't, like, great anymore. But I think the 13th Vision um, is relevant all the time. Yeah. I think it's a really cool card for that. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a a cup of milk right there. Just <laughs> going back. Yeah. Ooh, tasty mm. milk. It's going to make you feel sick. Everything makes me feel sick in this day and age. It's my IBS. Did we talk about that? That we, was this video, Yeah, right? we did, yeah. yeah. Hey! hey the tower. It's my favorite card. Four cost tarot card. You cannot commit skill cards. Card. You cannot commit cards to skill tests while towers in your hand. It was drawn in your opening hand during setup, but before or after taking a mulligan, you cannot replace it. It must stay in your opening hand. I hate this card. <laughs> you can one hundred percent play around it. It is not a. It is not a death sentence, but it is so bitterly painful to just have it be slowing down your deck or to basically make you have to decide one of two things. Do I play the tower and play no assets yep. and just live with it because I've got good skill cards in my hand or do I just ignore my skill cards for a little while, play my assets and then get to a place where I can play the tower? It really decides a bunch of your opening hand yep. and to me the worst part as someone who draws it literally in every single opening hand that I draw, um, which shouldn't happen, uh, it also hurts because you cannot just that's put it down. The, that's like, so what these cards kind of do is when you hit them, they're basically like an indebted for hand size, but you have to still look at it the rest of the game. Yeah. Right? Like, if I could, I mean, I, I do think the ta like that that part on it is really bad. I do not like that part. It 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 hurts. It sucks to lose the card from your mulligan. And then, like, if you do care about skill tests, like, but it's not just skill cards. It's any cards to skill. You yeah. cannot commit anything. Which is, like, you're like, oh, this isn't relevant until suddenly you're like, oh, shit. It's super relevant now. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, when you get this in your opening hand, you basically have to decide your game plan for the next five turns. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way you work around this. Yeah. Is you decide, I'm playing my assets or I'm not playing my assets. Come on. But it's up to you. Uh, the best the best workaround for the for the tower is that decision or um, uh, having a, or mulliganing to a resource card. Yeah. Spend two cards to get rid of this one bad card. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Russ. All right. I sound very upset. Self centered. So this is multiplayer only. Uh, Revelation puts self centered into play in your threat area. 
You cannot commit cards to other investigators' skill tests or affect other investigators with player card effects, except aspects that cause damage and horror, double action, discard self-centered. This is so soft. Yeah. This is butter soft. This is hot butter. I love getting this card because it gives me a reason to not interact with my teammates. <laughs> like, especially like when I'm playing two-handed solo, I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. You want food, don't you? Yeah, no, but this one is butter soft. Butter soft. It's, yeah. And like, I, I actually can't recall unless I'm like a support deck where I'm like, okay. Like, I'm just going to like, I, I, I'm going to just keep this forever. Yeah, I'll take self-centered all day, every day. Yep. Yeah. All right. Kleptomania. This is an asset. Multiplayer only. Revelation, put into play in your threat area. As an action, take control of an item asset or two resources from another investigator at location. Then, shuffle Kleptomania into your deck. At the end of your turn, take one horror. This is a great card. I want this card. I want to run this card. This is one of the only ways you can give someone an give someone resources. It is true. It's one of the few ways you can do this. Yeah. That's great. I want to build an entire deck around getting Kleptomania. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to build a just deck that's like, it. give me some money. Hi, buddy. No. Um, I could see this being bad, especially if somebody's resource tapped out. But at the same time, uh, just don't be around other people. If you're not around other people, you still take the horror oh yeah good point good point oh good point okay no this is way worse than i thought it was yeah so this one is oh a... never mind <laughs> thanks i didn't i realized there's no two action to discard it no yeah no it's oh. and, you, and you actually never get rid of it uh if you if you take an item it shovels back into your deck and you're gonna draw it again down the road yeah yeah oh that's actually really not good it is fun like there's there's like good stories good long stretch russ you little snake um there's good stories that come with kleptomania um, but then there's also a lot of times where you're like, the person's like, you've taken so much from me, I can't give you anymore, right? Like, you've taken, like, I can't help you, you're going to be taking horror for a bit. Yeah, and yeah. and I mean, this could, like, if you want to talk about situations where the muscle doesn't it needs their weapon, and you just <laughs> take it. <laughs> I'm the seeker with a gun now. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay, I see this as bad now. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Ouch. It's fun. It's very flavorful, though. I think, like, it's a good weakness design. Yeah. For, like, the flavor. But I also think, in the function, too, it is on the tougher side. All right, narcolepsy. Uh, multiplayer only. Mm -hmm. Put narcolepsy into play in your threat area. You cannot take actions, trigger abilities, or play cards. As an action, wake up. Discard narcolepsy. Forced. After you take damage or horror, discard narcolepsy. No, this is great. This is not a bad weakness, <laughs> and I love it. I think it's the funniest thing ever. Why would you ever not wake up? <laughs> Why would you? I mean, it's nice that if you take damage or horror, yeah, it goes it, it away. It forces you up, wake, yeah. But why would you never wake up? <laughs> I really want to play this and just stand still for one. Well, you have to. You can't trigger your own action. That's true. Right? So someone else has to come and trigger that's, it for you. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Yeah. This is very funny to me. Uh, so this card... In like three or four, in like three or four, in four players, I think it's pretty manageable. Mm -hmm. In three players, I think it's annoying, but manageable. In two players, I actually think it becomes pretty difficult. Oh yeah, it's almost a death sentence. Yeah. Could you Especially imagine like, falling you, asleep as Yig walks up? Yeah, or just like you have to, like, yeah, no doubt, eh? Uh, or like if you're, you can't like separate, because if you separate, like you'll have to like move all the way back. Or you get stuck in one of those uh, those scenarios where one of you is separate. Yeah, you're actually separated, <laughs> and you, then you've literally lost the scenario. You cannot yeah. win. Um, and so you take damage or horror, which is nice. You have that fail yeah. safe. True, but like um, if the doom just keeps rolling. All right, sorry, Russ. You want to come sit on my lap? That's so funny. Come here. Um, we had uh, some great moments where um, Travis and I escaped a scenario. Uh, Bryn was on his way out, but he was the only one still playing, and he fell asleep. And then uh, it do uh, it doomed out, and he got trauma. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I, narcolepsy is one of the few that when I draw, I get scared of. Oh, fair. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it can be really bad, but it also can be really soft. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also very well balanced, too. Um, but I would say it's on the upper. It's not, like, up there with, like, the hardest ones, I think, mm -hmm. maybe. But it is on the it's higher It's not for end. whom the bell tolls. No, 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 no. But it could kill it, you. It could kill you. Yeah. All right. Your worst nightmare. Multiplayer only. 2-3-2. Two, two. Hunter. 
Prey bear only. The bearer of your worst nightmare cannot attack, damage, or defeat it. That's still not bad. I think the only time that that's bad is when the, it's the muscle who gets it. Yes, yeah. That's kind of the, the general thought on that as well. Um, just and, evade it. And just evade it. Yeah, Every just, turn for the rest of the game. Run away, <laughs> just to run away from your nightmares. Um, I think that this card is an example of why I would find it more enjoyable if um, we knew our weaknesses at the start. Yes. Because then the Seeker's like, you know what I'm going to do? I actually went to tech harder on damage just for fun. Because, yeah. like, every other time, like, the Seeker is just like, I'm going to get clues. And, like, the Guardian's like, I'm going to kill things. And then they draw the weaknesses, and the Seeker's like, I guess I got to upgrade into a kill spell or two, right? Um, now, instead, it's just like, the Seeker's like, hey, we should try flexing each of us. And the Spider's like, Guardian's like, that sounds like a fun idea, right? Yeah. It's a bit more interesting, I think. It can, like, change up how things are going to go. Um, but yeah, this card's only bad if the goon gets it, and then you just kind of have to tech for it. If you're playing four-player, I don't think this card's ever going to be a problem, because there's usually multiple people who can solve any, uh, things. I also have a recurring nightmare of getting trapped under a bed with someone sleeping on top of me, and they won't let me out, and I'm just stuck down there. I don't really have recurring nightmares. I've had a lot of stress dreams lately, though. Oh, I'm sorry I think it was that. related to the carbon monoxide thing. Probably, right? Yeah, probably, probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. 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 All right. Justin just wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, a cursed follower. Uh, two, two, two. Spawn, location farthest from you, aloof. Uh, at the end of the enemy phase, add one curse token to the chaos bag. He's... This accursed follower is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I want this, and I want this in a curse deck. <laughs> yes. Anytime you get this in a curse deck, you're like, oh, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, most of the time, it's not annoying. No. And sometimes it's, like, minorly annoying if you get him out, like, on, like, turn one and he adds, like, eight curse tokens. But also, it's the furthest location from you, which on a lot of opening scenarios is... Your location? Your like location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's he's on the softer side for sure. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. a softie. All right. Dread curse. Add five curse tokens to the chaos bag. I've become a chaos. I've become <laughs> a chaos deck. I mean, a curse deck. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soft, too. Yeah. Until, like, I had a situation where two people had these in their deck, and we were never, like, below six curses in the bag. That was, like, the only time that I actually noticed that this was, like, a little bit of a scary situation. But overall, um, yeah, pretty minor. Take Blasphemous Covenant, profit. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Yeah, you just, like, it's pretty easy to buy stuff to deal with this. Yeah. Yeah. Or just, like, pass the tests. I know, like... Travis always laughs when I say that because he's like, that's not actual advice. But it is. Like, just pass your tests. <laughs> just don't take damage, right? Like, just don't. Just, yeah. Just don't. Get good. Yeah, get good. <laughs> like, that's the, it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Day of Reckoning. Attach Day of Reckoning to the current agenda, then search the Chaos Bag for an, uh, an Elder Sign token and seal it on Day of Reckoning. Meh. All right, Russ, I'm going to pause the video and we'll go back to Day of Reckoning. But you're just being a little bit wild. All right, so you said meh for Day of Reckoning? Why is, why meh. Is that? I mean... You're right, by the way. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't bank on always getting the Elder Sign token. Yeah. Um, sometimes the Elder Sign token, like, isn't necessary to get. This, it, it sucks that it seals one of your success tokens away. Yeah. But... Like, if I had a card that for five experience and five resources sealed away the auto fail, I would not run that card. Yeah. How, what was it? Five. Five experience and five resources to play. That card exists, I think, actually. I would not play it. <laughs> <laughs> that card is bad. <laughs> what if I told you there was a cute little guy? Oh, it's four resources, Eric. That changed. What if I told you there was a cute little monster peeking out? Aww, but I want to let him out. Yeah, so seal the seven sign. It seals the elder sign, seven charges, if it has no charges, or at least play remover from the game. That's I not mean, a good card. It's one of those things where, like, you know, it's it's not a great card. Um, it's not even... I'm just I'm, saying it right now. Yeah. But I mean, like, so... What that does do, it means that you never fail. 
Um, but like at the same time, this doesn't mean you never pass. Like, just like, it's like, it's not like the same kind of thing. And like in a, in a, most decks when you build, you're kind of planning to be up four anyway. So like it really just changes your odds from one of 16 to one of 15 in most cases. Um, it's also really great when you draw this, the upkeep before the agenda the agenda advances and then you just immediately get your elder sign back and it does nothing that's always my favorite i never considered that that's um, really funny however i actually do have uh examples of that this card does make a difference because in my campaigns where i've had this i keep track of all my elder signs and auto fails uh in campaigns where i do have this card i end up drawing usually like five to ten more auto fails than elder signs Fair. so it does make a difference but I probably still won some of those campaigns, but I also lost some of those campaigns. Is it because of Day of Reckoning? No. <laughs> it's not. Is it because of Bryn and Travis? No, because no. those were solo. Well, yes, because they weren't there. So yeah, it was because of them, because they were there to help me. Yeah. Yeah, no, this card's pretty soft. Happy to see this as my weakness, because I'm like, oh, I, it doesn't do anything. It just eats a draw. I'm, the, I'm that person in the back. This is fine. Yep. Uh, all right, these ones are all very similar. So these are the edge of the earth ones. So they all go into your threat area and they all, like when you take a certain type of action, you cannot perform any of those type of actions for the remainder of the turn. And they go away if they heal a damage or a horror. So arm injury is a damage. I have to take a fight or activate action, which is the little arrow. You cannot take any of those type of actions for the remainder of the turn. Leg injury, also damage, move, resign, or evade. Panic, which is... Wait, if I take the resign action, I can't take any more actions for the remainder of my turn? <laughs> yes, but look at it more like, for example, it's the final scenario, you have to move and then resign. You can't do that anymore. That's fair. Uh, panic, single point of horror, so heal the horror. Play, engage, or resource action. And stupor is parlay, draw, or investigate. I think these are actually all pretty scary, personally. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little freaked out by them. Um, I have been shown that running healing is generally not super ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, damage mitigation is better than damage healing, mm -hmm. uh, which means that if I got this, I would have to rethink my deck mm -hmm. a little bit and possibly play some some opt suboptimal cards. Um, I also uh, think that on a fighter. Yeah, this uh, arm injury is bad and then bad. likewise for uh a kluver stupor is bad because of the investigate yeah yeah uh i think these are all i think these are all weaknesses that i would immediately start thinking about how to play around and how to get rid of the moment uh i put them into my threat area so these are actually the reason why i changed my perspective to wanting the um weaknesses drawn before when these cards came out that's yeah. what changed my perspective mostly because Let's just say you were a Kluver and you got arm injury. I don't care, right? Yeah. But if you're the fighter and you get arm injury, that changes everything. But you don't get a react to it until your deck is already done. Yeah. Right? Like, I think that it's good that it can hurt you, right? I think it's good and it's interesting. But I think it's even more interesting if you're like that and you're like, well, um, I'm a rogue. Where's my damage healing, right? Like, where can I start to explore this? You know, or like, I'm a survivor. Let's see what we can do to make this. I'm going to play bandages. Why not? Let's see how this is going to go, right? Um, as opposed to like, I think it makes it worse when you always have to just assume that you could draw these. Well, and I, what I don't like about this one too mm -hmm. is that this could cause you to just lose a scenario. Mm -hmm. Like, by the time you can tech around it and fix the problem, mm -hmm. uh, you could just lose your first scenario. You might lose your first scenario to one of these cards coming out early. Yeah, I think, like, I think it's that's less of a case if you go to higher player counts. Like, three mm -hmm. or four, I think yeah. you can play around those weaknesses. But Sorry, definitely a two. two yeah, yeah, which is your perspective that you play. I'm, I'm mostly adding it for their context as opposed to just your context. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> I agree 100%. I don't want to, but I, I, I'm going to be going back a bit. I don't think that's bad. But I just wish that there was more upfront counterplay because I think these cards are more annoying than they are punishing and they have such a big window to hit. I think laying injury is the only one that everyone wants to like get rid of, right? Because I think moving twice is very good. Yeah. Um, and then this one, the play engage your resource is also kind of a little bit annoying. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like I think the level that both stupor and arm injury live in uh, sucks. 
I think they actually, in the newest cycle, which we're going to talk about at the end of this video, they got some uh, a cycle of weaknesses that I think explored this space better than these cards do. That's good. These are also one of the few cards that I will always re-roll if I'm playing standalone because they just ruin the experience um, because I you have to roll after. And I know I could change it so I roll before. I know that. But going back to what I said earlier about like the for each every, I, I the rules are there for me to follow. I'm a little bit of a stickler. I'm a little bit of a stickler. That's why I'm a stickler. You just view it as Justin um, cancels the campaign, rebuilds the exact same deck, and then rolls again. Oh. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, but <laughs> I think I think your um, your reading of these are really good, and your only counterplay is really like either tech before, hope someone brought healing, or tech after. Yeah, yeah. And I think the tech before option is the worst of the three. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you don't want to be building, you don't you don't want to build every single fighter as if arm injury is going to come into play. Yeah, that, congratulations, you're now playing the same character well, with different faces. I mean, and also kind of like with that logic, that's kind of like the level of like uh, I'm the fighter, I always play this gun because it's the best gun. Like it's kind of like that kind of like you like overarching deck building that's like not good for the game as a whole. No. Right? Yeah. All right. Through the gates. I'm very curious about your thoughts on this one. So draw the top card of your deck. If it is not a weakness, remove that card from the game. Then search your deck, discard pile, hand, and all play areas for each other copy of the card you own and remove them from the game as well. This doesn't actually remove them from your deck, just from the game. Just from the game, yeah. yeah. So they're not exiled. They're just gone from that scenario. I like this card. I like this card. I think that this is a really fun weakness. This is a weakness that scares me, um, but doesn't uh, feel unfair. Mm -hmm. I love the idea that it's just going to eliminate... Yeah. two of my um something yeah yeah so you know how i said indebted was the weakness i wish i had all the time yeah i actually think it's this one because i fucking love spinning the wheel to see what gets eliminated yeah uh i have a i played a standalone once where i was building around a specific card i drew this on turn uh two and it got rid of both those cards from my deck so I lost the key piece, and I was like, all right, let's go. My immediate thought was Red Gloved Man, and yeah. I was like, I'm, I want to play that deck. I yeah. want to play my Will Yorick, and the Red Gloved Man's like, yeah. Bah. Um, So this one also, from every time I've talked to, I've made a video about weaknesses, this is the one that has the biggest range of people who say this is one of the worst to this is one of the softest. I'm over here. I think that this is one of the easiest weaknesses in the game. But it's also, to me, one of the funnest weaknesses to play in the game. Because it can get anything. Like, it could, it could get, like, anything. Yeah. Yeah. If you're playing uh, 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 Highlander, so, like, you're playing one of each card, um, this does, like, it just removes a card from your deck, which is, like, super soft. Yeah. But, like, I, under I, I can respect the people who are, like, building elaborate combos or people who can't get over the headspace that I lost that card, right? Yeah. Because you did, but you also, like, maybe in a way didn't, right? Because, like, maybe you never would have drawn it. If you're cycling through your deck multiple times, this can get really fucking funny, which I think yeah. is really cool. Um, but it's... I love it. It's just so fun. I also love the idea that whatever ghostly light from beyond is just stealing my guns. Yes. So I actually do... Uh, <laughs> you, you gave me... This is, this has just made me realize. So on our, on our Patreon, which you can find the link down in the description if you want to support me, uh, while I make Arkham videos... Um, we have a, every two months we have a different challenge which a different with a different deck building stipulation and a different challenge mode to play. I think I'm going to do one where you have to play like two through the gates in your deck. Yes. And let's just like have some fun. Yeah. Right? Let's just see what happens. I love it. Yeah. Maybe two with extra through the grates, but they also, you get a, well, after you play them, you also still draw a card. So they don't eat your draw, hmm. but they just slowly eat your deck. <laughs> I think that could be really fun. I love that. All right. Next one. Uh, Unspeakable Oath. We have three of these. I think you actually played with one of these. I did. So, they're campaign mode only. They're peril and hit it. Add it to your hand. When the game ends, if you're eliminated, if it's in your hand, you earn two fewer experience. Bloodthirst is deal damage to an enemy in excess of its remaining health. Discard this card from your hand. Curiosity is investigate a location with no clues on it to discard. And Cowardice is evade. Use only on an exhausted, unengaged enemy or location. If you succeed, discard this card from your hand. This one, they all have a red line around them for some reason. I don't know why. Or like around the outside. Yeah, that's very weird. Um, I don't like this card. I actually, this card feels really bad to me because um, as someone who's been playing with it for a while, um, it 
takes up a slot in your hand. Mm-hmm. Um, is it in your Yorick deck? It is. Which one is it? Do you have Bloodthirst? Bloodthirst. Okay, so I mean, you got the one that was easiest for you yeah, to deal with. Yeah, easiest for me to deal with. But it requires that excess damage, which sometimes doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes I have to vary, like, because I'm because I'm more focused on winning the game than I am about getting rid of Bloodthirst, I have to think about, like, if I have multiple enemies, I have to yeah. be really smart about how much damage and where I'm reassigning it and doing damage on items that exhaust. Um... What I don't like about this card is that it is a sleeper injury to your long-term play. Mm-hmm. So I actually find these cards a little scary, personally. So I think that these ones are interesting. Yeah. Um, I think... Which is, which is to say I like them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I, I find um, them scary. So my problem with these cards is kind of like what we talked about with the edge of the earth healing weaknesses Mm -hmm. where like if you get the wrong one it really can change things i don't care too much about earning fewer experience if the time comes i'm pretty okay with that so they're a little bit less bad to me Mm -hmm. um I think the problem is, though, is that, like, if you get the one that you're good at, it's a lot easier to deal with than the one if you're bad at. Yeah. And I think that is, like, I I would rather if you got Unspeakable Oath and it was, like, tied to your type. Like, you could choose which one you chose. Mm -hmm. Um, Or, like, you choose, like, the, I don't know, like, I don't know. I just think, like, the swinginess of the cards isn't, like, really enjoyable. But I love her at the club, by the way. Can we talk about this? Because <laughs> um, they do kind of change, like, how things work for you. Uh, oopsie. Got too far. Oh, we got Dendromorphosis next. Let's go. Um, but it is one of those things where, like, it's a little bit... Like, I think this one is probably, like, the hardest one to trigger, the Evade one. Yeah. I wish it was just, like, this one for all of it. Like, this was the only version of it. It just gave you Cowardice. I think yeah. that could be really fun. Um, But, like, it's. I think it's going to, like, when you play with this, I think... Like, especially when you're starting out, I think it's very overwhelming. When you play with it, like, again in another one, like, especially this one, you're going to be like, oh, this isn't that bad. Yeah. Right? Um. But, like, when you're just, like, right now with your deck, I especially see it, too, because also your your weapon, spoilers, slight, if you are uh, if you haven't, I mean, the episodes haven't come out yet, um, but your weapon isn't super reliable, right? Which yeah. also adds to the drama of the whole thing. Yeah. It's very hard for you to kill in an excess because of that. Yeah. Um, but, like, if you're playing a reliable weapon that deals excess damage, you're going to trigger that right away. But if you weren't, if you were a clue getter, this becomes a lot harder to get, which is, I think, where the problem of these ones lie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they are daunting. You don't like seeing them in your hand because they take up a slot and they also are a risk to your experience, which... But I find them... I find that the way that they work, and I wonder if this was the design space for them, is um, they tempt me to make suboptimal plays. Yes, yes. To try and preserve experience. Which I think is really cool and flavorful. Yeah. yeah. I just think there needs to be a valve to not just like, you know, like there should be like, if you're the guardian, take... This one. Yeah. If you're the seeker, also take this one. Everyone just take cowardice. I think cowardice is really good. Yeah. All right. Dendromorphosis, uh, natural transformation. This is an asset that takes up your hand slots. It soaks for one damage. Uh, Revelation, put Dendromorphosis into play in your hand. It cannot leave play while it has no damage on it. As Lightning Bolt, take one direct damage, deal one damage to Dendromorphosis. I love this. Tree hands, we call it. Tree hands. Uh, this is terrifying. <laughs> I think it's great. I I love this. Uh, I I think the imagery. I think the art isn't doing it enough justice. This is a really messed up weakness to have. <laughs> uh, this is not something that like if this happened, uh, all the cults in the world would have the lid blown off their conspiracy <laughs> immediately. When the doctor's like, no, this this person is literally growing a tree out of their body, and it's evil. Yeah. Um, they can test that with science. Evil trees. Mm-hmm. Um, they can. They can. No, that's my dad's a botanist. Yeah. Plants. Um, I l- designed by the botanists at Arkham Knights 2018. Amazing. Uh, I like this. Mm-hmm. I actually like this. I also think that it's a really uh, mean card. The fact that it just throws away your items. Yeah. I feel like that hurts a lot. And then it's hard to get rid of it without also putting yourself at risk. Yeah. When you're now down yeah. on your defensiveness. So, um... 
this card is swingy like all oh, once again this goes to all basic weaknesses it's just, just like you should have just assumed that for all of them but this one i actually don't like seeing yeah it's like and you always end up it happened to Bryn. it's where we have like this this running joke for Bryn. so Bryn built a deck that was uh, with leo anderson that was all about playing a two-handed gun that he put a bunch of attachments on and it was how he was going to kill things and this was his weakness and he would just be like this tree hands can't hold the gun my hands are my, my tree my hands are trees uh and we kind of like so like that's where like the joke happens and then i also played a leo deck that was all about big guns and i got dendromorphosis and it just like <laughs> changes things you can play around this card by trying to fish it out before you play your weapons you can also play a bandolier to give yourself more hand slots you can also play like cheaper weapons you can change your game plan to not be around big weapons um to like be like okay what can i do to make this a little bit easier um but it also affects like if you use your hand slots for anything this is going to get it upside of this one if you take damage from an encounter card you can put it on dendromorphosis yeah because it, it soaks one for you i also like that it's the uh, one of the only cards i know that can avoid direct damage <laughs> <laughs> this card's tech you're wrong uh, it's a cool card it's a cool card it's wait I, you can cast spells with your tree hands though yeah. oh yeah because those are your spell slots yeah. yeah. You have your twig fingers. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this one is definitely on the, um, I think on the scarier side. Yeah, and I love it. Yeah. All but right. also, this is one of the, this is one of the ones that has blown open the Arkham Conspiracy. <laughs> There's no hiding. Okay, so this is Offer You Cannot Refuse. This is another multi-class card. You actually saw me play this card in my Parallel Skids deck. Mm -hmm. So when you can, and this is also, I have a bone to pick with this card. I remember, I remember, I rem I'll never forget I'll never forget. I, I, okay, let me, just let me read the card. We'll get through the other ones after. So, campaign mode only. When you become the bearer of this weakness, gain two experience. Nice. Can I ask a question? When do you think you get to spend that experience? At the end of the next... No. You get a, As soon as you get this weakness, you get to you spend it. You have to? You get to. You don't have to. So then, why do I... When does my deck building finish? Great question, huh? After I roll my basic weakness? Can I not make changes after that? Hmm, great question. Uh, but I remember I did this once. I, I built the, and I spent the experience. And then everyone was like, you can't do that. And I'm like, I'm doing it because that's how it's supposed to be. And it turns out <laughs> that it was how it's supposed to be, even though it seems a little bit strange. I love that. Um, yeah, so this is also why I think you should roll your weaknesses first because it also just makes this card even easier to grok, right? This is the offer you cannot refuse phase. Yes. Of the deck <laughs> yeah, building the deck structure. Building. They actually added in there. Yeah. All right, so revelation, lose five resources. If you cannot, instead remove offer you cannot refuse from your deck, search the collection for fine print and place it in your discard pile. So notably, this is very similar to this. Yeah. Fine print, lose seven resources. If you cannot, remove five from, from your deck, search your collection for Sell Your Soul, and place it in your discard pile. Sell Your Soul, lose 10 resources. If you cannot, your dark patron tears you from consciousness, uh, tears, tears your consciousness from your body, and you are driven insane. So very similar to Doomed, but I'm curious, how do you view the counterplay between the two? Like, like... Do you, like, yeah, just tell me your thoughts on these ones. I like Offer You Cannot Refuse because once you get it, you can play around it. Yeah. You can choose to keep resources up. What I don't like about Doomed is there is no solution to Doomed <laughs> outside of that yeah, very they, narrow tech. I mean, like, they're both life. This is this is death and taxes, right? Yeah, like, that's, what that's these very are. funny. <laughs> um, but you can pay your taxes. You yes, cannot you, pay debt. And you should pay your taxes. And this is the reason why you should, or else... The devil will just, show up. I'm just looking up offer you can't refuse to make sure they haven't walked back that. Oh, I hope they have. I hope you're caught out on screen. If it's starting, no. If it's starting to grant you XP, you can spend that XP right away if you wish. Let's go. If you wish. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah offer you cannot refuse. Uh, I like it. I also really enjoy this one. Um, it's led to some fun decks when I have got it. It actually has a pretty notable tax, though. Where you have to keep, like, you're basically, your zero is now five. Yeah. Which means on your first turn of the game, you actually probably saw this in my skids deck in the, through the Forgotten Age. 
uh, where I would not spend enough to go below five, like ever, ever. if I could avoid it. No, exactly. Yeah. I see. I see this changing your deck strategy to being okay. I've got to be a big money deck. Yeah. yeah. Or just like five is five is the new zero. Five is the new zero. It is, I think, like a very good version of a fixed doomed. Yeah, I like that much better than doomed. Yeah. Uh, it's also flavorful too, right? Because you're getting the two experiences bonus. Yeah, that's you, nice. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, the Thanks devil. dark patron. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the devil. It's that. It's that goat. She's <laughs> trying to deal with that goat. Bah. Bah. All right, damned. This is a permanent. Before setting each game, draw a random card from the tarot deck and place it in front of you in the reverse position. Each other investigator ignores its effects. I love this. Is this because you get to work with the, uh, the tarot deck? Yeah, and yeah. it is hurts. Yeah, like it, it can whiff. Like it could be just like your first foot test is minus one each round, and you go. Right, but I feel like there's other times it'll just destroy you. Yeah, it is. It's very swingy. Um, it's not in your deck, which is a positive. Mm -hmm. um, I think this card's a very fun weakness, though. I really enjoy playing with damned because it can be anything, and it changes each each scenario. And that's what I like about it too: is you cannot tech around this. This as a weakness is just like hope. Yep. You must hope. You just gotta hope that you don't. Uh... You just have to remember that we are all animals, living on a spinning sphere of fire and stone mm -hmm, and water mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yeah here's here let's just uh i don't know where this is going <laughs> let's just see some of these uh just gotta have hope see some of these bad ones yeah right uh, just seeing this one's pretty soft you don't get to see them i get to see them and i barely get to see them this is you suffer one additional trauma if you're defeated, just don't get defeated, forehead. Yeah. This guy has a hat that I would 100% wear. Oh yeah, this one, like, each investigator cannot mulligan or replace weaknesses in their opening hand. You resolve any revelation abilities when a game begins. That's Like, brutal. if you hit that, you get minus two experience. That's bad. Um, that's just, that's just, that's just the blood curse, but yeah. now you live with it. Uh, you search your deck for an ally acid and move from the game. That's pretty minor, because you yeah. probably have two of them. You have two fewer actions to take on your first turn. Yeah. Cannot play assets. Yeah. Uh, the final agenda enters play with one additional doom on it. Okay. So, like, there, there's some that it can, like... Uh, it could be scary. Add a random basic weakness to your deck for that scenario. <laughs> it could be anything. It could be... Dendrophobia. <laughs> oh, wait, no. That's not what it was. Two fewer cards in your opening hand. Mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, Elder Sign token you reveal each agenda becomes a minus five token instead. Yeah, minus one health. Like, there's enough negatives that I think that overall it'll skew, like, harder. Yeah. I love it, though. It's fun. Like, I think anything that just changes it up from scenario to scenario I think is really enjoyable experience. Exactly. And you can't, fresh... you can't do anything around it, and I like no. that. Yeah. All right. You ready for the other one? The oh, devil. Ready. Oh, hey, it's the devil again. Three cost. No, no, that's the tower. This is the devil. Oh. Three cost, tarot slot. You cannot play assets other than the devil while it is in your hand. If it's drawn in your opening hand during setup, you cannot replace it. It must stay in your opening hand. I like the devil. It's easier than the tower. Really? It's only three bucks. Three bucks, but you can't play any other assets. Yeah. Because, like, with the tower, you can at least ignore it for you a little can. bit. You can set up other stuff. You're right. This is probably worse, but this feels so much better than me. That <laughs> I'm so tired of the tower. No, that's fair. I'm yeah, ready to meet the devil. So for, uh, for people who don't know, uh, Eric went through Forgotten Age with the tower in their Luke deck. And then in the opening of uh, Circle Undone, Eric chose to accept their fate, which is what everyone usually does in their first time. And then... Uh, Anna Caslow was like, all right, here are two weaknesses to your deck. One of them is a, t a player card that is actually bad, and the other is the tower again. Have fun! <laughs> and I've proceeded to draw the tower every single time. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, if you think of this one in, like, your... Like, if we just put a one-to-one -one in your Yorick deck, which means that if you don't play this, you actually can't use your ability either. That's right? true. That's true. Um, they're both... I think they're pretty, like... They can change depending on the style of deck as well. Yeah. But I think that... I guess the hard thing is I'm having a hard time not seeing this as um, uh, that card that says that you start with two fewer indebted, assets. Yeah. I'm having a hard Fewer time not seeing this yeah. as as a better indebted, but it might not appear. Yeah. 
like uh, it has the same downsides as the tower where like so it's, it's interesting right because like they have the same downsides where they can both eat a card in your opening hand mm -hmm. uh, they also have a downside where they give you they stop you from doing something until you play them and then that's an action that you're also costing yeah. as well as a restriction um, I, but the, the, the difference is, is that if you're a skill deck the devil is probably easier if yeah. you're a uh, asset deck the tower is a lot easier and you know what i yeah i will take that back uh this is clearly worse than the tower it's got a lot going on um but it was hard for me not to look at that three and go so yeah this much is so, easier. Yeah, so much easier i mean all we got to do is i'll just force you to play with the devil in your next one you can see the difference I'll just draw it, don't worry. And yeah. then I'll get the tower from some little old lady. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think that they're both... Uh, yeah. They're both tough. I mean, I, I, I do really value the taking up a card in your hand. I think that is a notable a notable downside. Yeah. All right, Lurker in the Dark. So these ones are from Scarlet Keys, and these have a mechanic where they actually care about only being in a certain class. Oh. Uh, but the question is... Does that change the variance, or does it actually make like the variance even higher? Let's find out. Lurker in the Dark, 3 2 1. Uh, Guardian Investigator only. Spawn in any connecting location. Lurker in the Dark can only be attacked or damaged using weapon assets or tactic events and takes one fewer damage from each source. That's so dumb. This is so much easier. You're 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 the class that wants to have weapons or tactics. What if you are Carolyn Fern or Carson Sinclair? I've never played either of them, so they, they're, they're, <laughs> they they're not exist. real. <laughs> they're not real. That's really funny. That's really funny. Uh, I do think that this is one of the easier ones to solve because most Guardians do skew towards this kind of stuff. Yeah. But, like, if you are Carolyn Fern and you're, like, I'm the Kluver and then the Guardian, is the, the Mystic is like, I deal damage with spells. You look at this thing being like, well, shit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, it, it is nice that it spawns on a connecting location, though, so hopefully you have some time, if you're set up like that, to yeah, run. to run, yeah. Or, also, it's got one evade. It does have one evade, yeah. You could just try to keep running away from it. However, if you can't solve a problem and evading it, you'll eventually get swallowed up. Yeah. Caught to us at the Forgotten Age finale when I just kept trying to evade my all of our enemies. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've seen this one do nothing, and I've seen this one actually be a nuisance. Mm -hmm. uh, these ones are newer, so I, I have less insight on these ones than some of the other ones. Um, next one, Quantum Paradox. This is a zero-cost event, Seeker Investigator only. As additional cost to play Quantum Paradox, you must choose and discard four other cards from your hand. If it's in your hand at the end of your turn, reveal it and take a horror. That's a good weakness. I like that. If I got that and I was a Seeker, I'd be very uncomfortable. Yeah. So it's actually very similar to Drawing the Sign, right? Yeah. Where um, it... Basically, is reducing your hand size for five for, like, once. Yeah. Right? Um, it's... It doesn't deal the horror at the end of the round, so it's also only during your turn if you draw it. Yeah. Which means there's, like, a... There's an urge for you to get rid of it um, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah. And I could see... I could see it also tempting players to risk taking damage to hold onto good cards. And to try and spend, to try and potentially even waste a turn drawing up to get rid yeah. of it. And most most Seekers do have higher Horror Soak than Meat Soak. So. Yeah. yeah. So I like this card. I actually think this is a really well-designed card. I think that there's a lot of um, tension built into it. My issue with stuff like this is that while a lot of Seekers can get big hand size, not all Seekers are hand size Seekers. Yeah. Again... I think this would all really change if you drew your weakest basic weakness first. But I feel like I've been beating this dead horse for a while, so maybe I gotta like ride it for a bit and see what happens. Yeah. It's not moving, I killed it. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, it doesn't matter how long you ride a dead horse. Alright, pay your due. This is a 10 cost event, rogue investigator only. As additional cost to play, pay your due. You may spend any number of additional actions to reduce its cost by five for each additional action spent. If pay your hand is in your due at the end of your turn, reveal it and take one damage. So, this ten, is so much better. Ten resources for one action, five resources for two, zero resources for three actions. This is so much better. Uh, because if even if you're an investigator that doesn't have money, you can just spend two actions to get rid of it. Well, it'll cost five. Because it reduces cost by five for each additional action spent. So one is ten... Two actions is five, so it still costs you five for two actions. 
Oh, so you have to spend all three actions. It's all three actions to get a free, yeah. Still better. I like it better because it actually gives you a, a more reasonable out than the other one. The other one can end up stuck in your hand until you're drawing up like crazy to try and get rid of it. Yeah, if you're really desperate, you could take three. Mm -hmm. Rogue is the action class too. Uh, I actually find this card to be pretty punishing yeah. in my play of it. I've only been, it, I've seen it played once and I've played it once. So I don't have a lot of insight into the card. Um, but like my thought is again, is that while rogue is the resource and action class, not all rogues are going to want to do that. No, 100%. Right? Again, if it was at the start, you know, you could build around it. You can have some fun and do that kind of stuff. But what do I know? What I like about it, though, yeah, yeah. is that if you're not the class that is big money, you can still solve it, even if it wastes you a turn, which sucks. Yes. No, it does it have sucks. it does have a, an emergency valve if things get really bad. Whereas the other card doesn't. Yeah. The other card's like, are you going to spend a turn drawing three cards? Yeah. Draw a fourth card. Still take a damage. This one doesn't have to. Yeah. The other card is literally worse if it catches you at yes. the wrong time. Yeah. The other card it, does, actually... it does have, like, a panic button that you can press. Yeah. yeah. I agree that is it does make it, like easier at least to do that but three actions is a lot mm -hmm. but if you need to you might need to right well and that might be your solution to the other card too like just to point it out if you're drawing if you're out of cards in your hand or you've only got one card in your hand and you pull up the other weakness you've now got two cards in hand you you probably want to spend at least two actions which only puts you at three so you have to spend three actions to get to four mm -hmm. That's your full turn. You take the horror, yeah. and then only at the beginning of your next phase you can you deal again. with it. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. Assuming that with both of these, like worst case scenario, you have like zero in each. Yeah. But I think like realistically, you could. Well, probably... Oh no, this could get worse. If this, if you have zero cards in hand and you draw this, that's, that's a yeah. That no, never mind. It's the same amount of actions. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. the same kind of thing. But like, it's also one of those things too where like. The three actions, I think, cascades over into... Because I think you can still advance the game while doing this, but taking three actions to just get rid of this is like basically taking your turn. It's yeah, like eliminating true. your turn. Again, um, I, the only thing I found about this one is that it was very hard for me to find a reason to take three actions because there were enemies I needed to kill. There were clues that needed to be gotten. It's... But, it, I'll, I'll, I got something for you. Mm -hmm. It's a softer narcolepsy. It is a softer narcolepsy. It is, yeah. It's just like if you woke up during the mythos phase, exactly. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I have very, I have limited perspective on these mm -hmm. ones. Um, I have a lot of perspective on this next one: ectoplasmic horror, two, 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 mystic class only, hunter. The first time you reveal a chaos token while attacking or attempting to evade ectoplasmic horror, reveal an additional token for each empty arcane slot you have. Interesting, huh? I don't think I'm not I'm not scared. I'm not scared of this weird dog. I'm not. I mean, okay, my first turn I'm scared. But every turn after that, like I'm looking to fill my arcane slots. Mm -hmm. So I'm not scared. I like this dog. Look at this cute dog. So let's also then put in like um a lot of mystics do flex, but let's just say you were a mystic that didn't. Yeah. And your guardian had to solve this, like your goon. Yeah. Your guardian now needs to reveal three tokens to fight this guy every time he attacks him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think like that's kind of like what the the it boils down to is that it kind of just changes. Um, if they're just like they're, they're like they're so swingy, you know. Would you say that this is a card that you would want to know about in advance before I would, building a deck. I would love to know about this before building a deck. I, yes, actually, I would. I would. Uh, luckily, just, just theory crafting here. Yeah, like, there's an example, like, Lily Chen. She's a, a mystic that turns into a guardian. She can play spell slots, but she usually doesn't. And this would be, like, something that I'd be like, okay, maybe I'm going to try a spell slot Lily if I knew in yeah. advance. And it's a lot easier to go in there at the start than, like, go into it after. I like the card, I like this one. I think of the five, this one is my most favorite. Um, uh, notwithstanding the rules, er, uh, there was three interpretations of this guy's rule text. <laughs> they finally got the one. They finally went like, no, this is the actual one. But this guy, it was crazy how much uh, discourse this guy talked about with his ability because it was like the first time each time, the first time each turn, the first time ever. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But it's uh, it is the first time each time, so it's every time that happens. You have yeah. to reveal additional. It's the tokens. worst option. Yeah, which is good. Which is good. Um, but like, if you have gear, gear spell slots full, this guy's like super doable. You think a dog with a man's face vomiting on you while you're trying to get water from a fire hydrant because he thinks that's helping? Do you think that? <laughs> You think that's going to be the easiest option? Yeah, no. I mean, I, yes, actually, what you described, yeah. I probably, yeah. I'm just saying, he's red. <laughs> the fire hydrant's red. He's yeah. just trying to help. Yeah. <laughs> Is this what you needed? Ugh. All right. That's the sound he makes. We got Underprepared. This is a one-cost event, survivor only. Oh. Play only if Underprepared is the only card in your hand and you have exactly one resource in your resource pool. While Underprepared is in your hand, each card you commit to skill tests is considered to have one fewer matching skill icon. Interesting. I feel that this is too punishing. There's almost no way to get it out of your hand without committing the cards that you're trying to save from this card. And having no resources. Well, one resource. And having one resource. I think this was too punishing. So, luckily, the downside of this card is relatively minor. Yeah. It's annoying, but it's not, like, crippling. Mm -hmm. However, with all that said, I've played with this card, I think, twice every, in, in two campaigns. Every time I drew it, I've never gotten rid of it. Yeah. I have never been able to get rid of it. Because, like... This might have been a survivor archetype that existed in the early parts of the game, but it does not exist anymore. Yeah. 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 I can't I can't see ever wanting to be at a point where you can get rid of this. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily the downside is relatively minor. Like you can still commit the card, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it had one icon, you could still commit it. It just doesn't increase your stat. Yeah. But it is uh notably um it's going to be there forever. Yeah. You're yeah. never going to want to get rid of this. Because yeah. if you're getting rid of this, you're in a bad place. Yeah. Like, it can, like, there's survivor decks that care about, like, not having resources or using their cards for other things. But it's not every survivor deck. It's also probably not even the minority of survivor decks. It's, like, the super minority of survivor I doubt, decks. And I doubt you want to be a, a class that has both going. Yeah. I doubt you want to have Yeah, it's no like, yeah, resources. you're going to, like, do one of the decks. Yeah. yeah. You're either going to be, like, no resources or discarding cards for value. Yeah. Not both. Rarely both. Yeah. All right. Self-destructive. So these are the starter decks ones. So these ones were all designed to fit into an archetype that matched the starting investigator. So self-destructive. Put self-destructive into play in your threat area. When you deal one or more damage to an enemy, take one damage and then double action discard self-destructive. That's either going to be the easiest weakness to have or it's going to be you're going to need to take that two action. Yep, that's exactly it. Yeah. And most of the time you get it as the seeker and you're like, let's go. Because it stays in play and then you just start cycling your deck and you're like... Spin the wheel? I'm okay with what's happening here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Obsessive. Put obsessive into play in your threat area. When your turn begins, discard one non-weakness card at random from your hand. Double action, discard obsessive. That one's way harsher, and you want to double action, discard it. So let me ask, because I agree. I think that this is a, quietly one of the worst weaknesses in the game, because people... We'll just let it sit. They'll let it ride, and they'll be like, yeah, I'll discard a card. And then suddenly an enemy is drawn in the next mental phase, and they're like, we can't get rid of this. You know? Yeah. Uh, where does this rank? So we have uh, Amnesia drawing the sign. So discard all but one. Hand size reduced by five, and then Obsessive. What's your ranking on these ones? I'm putting this number two. Uh, amnesia number one? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Gold star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no. Because it's just like... It's annoying. It is. It's incredibly annoying. And it, yeah, you really want to get rid of that too, because it's also, um, it's a random card. Yes. So like if you're holding the cards that are important, you're like, well, I hope I don't lose the one that I want to keep that's going to win me the game. And I'll lose this card that's going to lose, like that does nothing. And then I'm like, oh, I kept the one that does nothing. And do you really, like there are very few decks where you're going to want to be in a position where you are drawing and then playing every single card. Yeah. You don't want to be top decking this whole game. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to get rid of. It is two actions. Yeah. But it's just one of those things that I've seen so many people not get rid of it right away. And uh, I, I was one of myself. I had to learn the hard way that this needs to go and it needs to go now. Yeah. All right. You ready to see that this is my most gained basic weakness. Reckless. 
It's a flaw. Commit only to a skill test. It's a skill card, by the way. Commit only to a skill test you're performing of any type that has no other cards committed to it. Other cards cannot be committed to the skill test. If this skill test fails, return this skill to your hand. If Reckless is in your hand at the end of your turn, reveal it and lose two resources. It's not that bad. Not if you're building like the way you build with like one mono build that's yeah. probably passing tests anyways. Plus you can investigate uh, an already empty location, yeah. right? So you can just find a low yeah. shroud or location. Like, basically just do what's best for you, yeah. right? Like use your foot to evade something, use your fist to, a weapon to fight something. You can still use your weapon boosts. You can just investigate, or you could like use a spell. Use it's, your use your feet, people. Yeah, maybe that sometimes was a meme. you even get <laughs> you even get lucky where like you get to commit this to a test in the mythos phase and you Absolutely. pass it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Super minor, super soft. Probably, I would say the second softest weakness. And I mean, I don't want to lose two resources, but if it happens, yeah, you're just like. I'd rather lose two resources than half the other things that these weaknesses do. Yeah, agreed. Nihilism. But nihilism is playing your threat area. After you reveal, cancel, or ignore an autofail token, take a damage and a horror, double action, discard nihilism. When it hits, it's going to hit really bad. But... I might leave this up. Congratulations, nihilism just kills you. It happens to everybody. That's what I thought. Like that's that's the, like it is super soft. Like I think this card is actually like if I get this, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. But it's happened to everyone where you leave it up and then suddenly you draw two auto fail tokens. You fail two tests. The enemy retaliated on you, and you're like, I'm gonna die. Right. <laughs> like it, it's one of those things where like it. I, I agree. It, I I leave this around quite a bit. It is super soft until it suddenly is it. Until it just kills you. It just sneaks up on you it's it's a very quiet weakness that i i actually think leaving up is actually pretty okay to do but it's not at the same time <laughs> i love that and i actually think the design on this card is pretty good yes yes yeah. i because it traps people it does yeah. it does because then you get hit by one and you're like ah oh, fuck it i'll get rid of it you know it's like i should have got rid of this ages ago yeah yeah there was so much time where i was like i drew two cards Speaking from experience, if you're struggling with nihilism, yeah. go get therapy. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of this weakness. Yeah. All right. Uh, Atichophobia. This is uh, put into play in your threat area. After you fail a skill test, take a horror, double action, discard. This is another one I'm probably going to leave up, and then it's going to kill me. Yeah, this one I think is... Um, I also leave this one up quite a bit, but funnily enough, it actually has hurt me less than nihilism. Um... Because you nihilism, do draw a lot of auto fails. I do. I'm a, I'm a magnet for it. Uh, but I also think, like nihilism, this is one you probably want to get rid of ASAP. Yeah. Because like, if it deals you one horror, that's okay. But the second it deal has dealt you two, you're probably like, this is on me. I should have got rid of this. It's also yeah, yeah. As you pointed out with nihilism, that I wasn't really thinking about. Arkham's all about snowballing you to death. Yes. Yeah. It's like taking small cuts when it can. Like, as I said earlier, where, like, if I win 33% of my tests, it's going to win. Sorry, no, if I win 66% of my tests, I'm going to win. But the game is going to try to get me over as much as it can or put more stress and use my resources. And these are the cards that can help do it. Yeah. Without even you realizing it. All right. We are on to the final set of new basic weaknesses, the new cards from Hemlock Vale, which I have not played or experienced or seen played. So this is all just thought... Uh, theory crafting however i will say at the start of these i like the design on all of these weaknesses they're all very similar so we'll kind of go through them all at the same time they all take up a slot hand body necklace and spell and they all double action to discard they all also reduce your sanity or your damage or your health by one so the silver moth and the vow of dritzelik uh, all reduce your sanity by one and back injury and maimed hand reduce your health by one they all, when you draw them, you can either put them into play in your threat area or take a damage or a horror, depending on what it reduces. You can also then, uh, and you shuffle back into your deck when you do do that. It cannot leave play except by the double action ability below. So, Maimed Hand takes up one of your hand slots, you get minus one health. Uh, back injury, back slot minus one. Accessory, minus one sanity. Spell slot, minus one sanity. What do you think of these ones? I love these. 
I think these are much better. I like that you can either trade the minus one for a problem now to get rid of, yep. or you can shuffle it into your deck. Yep. I actually really, really like it. Yeah, because it'll, it, it'll eat another draw down the road. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. like, I mean, it's like one of those things where like, unlike Dendromorphosis, where it can just cripple you, like if you are holding a two-handed gun, you can choose instead to remove it, like put it, sorry, put it back into your deck, kick the can down the road, but you've also taken a damage and you're also going to lose another draw down the road. Right? I agree. Um, on top of that, what I also really like about them is that even if they're in a slot you are not using, like say you're a guardian and you don't care about your spell slot, you still have one less sanity while this is in play and that can sneak up and kill you. I like these. Yeah. And they're also really easy to get rid of. Yeah. 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 Because I like them because I think they're always relevant even if you're not immediately affected by it yeah main yeah. tang is the one that scares me most because i've mostly played violent yeah. characters yeah. but i also really love the um the flavor on them as well although i don't quite know how i discard a maimed hand uh someone goes like this when it gets better i really hate that in your arkham world it takes two actions to kiss well yeah one to grab one to kiss it's like Dungeons and Dragons in six seconds to do all that. Yes. Isn't it true? Someone told, I read this online. I don't know if it's actually the truth, but in the Dungeons and Dragons movies, each combat is like six seconds long. It's like, it like happens so quick and like they do it in initiative order. That's really Apparently funny. the movie was made with such love of like the D&D. &D. Yeah. And I did not watch it with that same love. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like these. I think these are really smart. I think these are a really yeah. great addition, and I do love the minus one health, minus one sanity. I also love that because having come out of the, the Yig campaign, um, it makes it makes you have to think differently about trauma. Yeah, and there's also um, there's a card in um, that campaign, the Curse of Yig, where it reduces your fist by one, so you get one less fist, but it also reduces your health by one. It's relevant. Yeah. Um, and I think these are a good thing to follow for that. Yeah, I like these. Yeah. I'm a big cool. fan. Uh, and we'll see if they're good. We'll see how they feel to play with. But I I, I see just a lot of uh, annoyance here, which I think is very relevant for yeah. it. I think, like, maybe, like, it's not enough of a downside if it doesn't affect the slot. We'll see where that goes. But it might be swinging. But I feel like they, as a whole cover all the bases for what I want out of a weakness. I think that if it doesn't cover the slot, then you're probably out of class for what that generally goes for. So for example, with the vow of Dristalek, yeah. um, getting minus one sanity on a character who only has five sanity yes. is going to feel very scary. Yeah, like if I look at that as Silas Marsh, my most played investigator, he has five and I probably would make the mistake of not getting rid of this. Because yeah. I think that's like how it gets you too, right? you don't get rid of it because you're like, this isn't going to do anything to me. And then suddenly you're fucking dead. Yeah, suddenly you're dead. Yeah. Amnesia, we're back. We're back. We're not going to talk through them all again. <laughs> Here's our second read yeah. through. Uh, so did that do what you wanted? Did you get insight into all the weaknesses? 100% you... it did. It right. taught me that I am completely out to lunch on all of the dangers of weaknesses <laughs> and no! how to work around them. You, I, I think you, you got there. You got it. I got there. I yeah, got there. Yeah, and yeah. then nihilism got me. Yeah, I mean, it gets everybody. That's the rule of nihilism. That's yeah. true. Uh, and hopefully you at home enjoyed this, especially if you are a new player and you're trying to like figure out these weaknesses and all that. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great one. Eric and I will be back for some more soon. Enjoy our Circle Undone playthrough. The next episode is going to be out tomorrow. Uh, have a good one. And as always, a GG's.